And so when we come out here to this yet to be constructed facility for the first time and practice and play, I have a question for you ladies. Are you guys willing to love each other and play for each other out here on this facility? Yeah. Raise your yeah. hand if the answer is yes. Well, that's, uh, that's all we need to hear for our family to write the final check to get this thing built for this season. Congratulations. What you heard right there was the announcement of the future on-campus beach volleyball complex made this past Monday via a surprise gathering. On the grounds of where your Osprey Beach Volleyball program will be playing here in the near future. Next week, in our second episode of Talent Talk, we will be discussing these things with Emily Strack, the current director of beach volleyball operations and assistant coach on the indoor volleyball team. She's seen each era of beach volleyball here at UNF, having played on the inaugural team in 2012. Today, though, we're going to talk to Raph Libanow, a interview that I had been thinking about for a while. Raph is on the baseball team, but he's also got another side adventure going on in his life right now. So we will look at that. In Malcolm Gladwell's well-known book, Outliers, Gladwell investigates the forces behind highly successful people. He looks at how and why the greatest in certain industries become what they are. And one of the observations made is that a child shows its aptitude at a very young age. For Junior Rath Libanow, swinging a bat, throwing a ball, definitely was no doubt a couple of those aptitudes. But what his family and friends didn't know is that he had a whole other world of talent hidden underneath. And that was the town of Flying Plains. And today we're going to take a look at that and kind of tie it in with all three of the things going on in his life. Baseball school and, and flying planes. So sit back. Glad that you're here to join us on our first episode of Talent Talk. And we'll begin with the interview. Welcome everyone to Talent Talk. This is our first guest, Raph Libanow. We have him on the show today. He plays for the baseball team here at UNF, a junior. Thanks for being on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, I know we've talked about this a couple times, and I think a couple months ago I saw you at the field, and you brought up that uh, you're about to get your pilot's license, and that's that's a pretty cool thing. Um, how, you know, how long in the making was that? Well, it took me about two and a half months. Um, I started in June. And I woke up one day, and it's always been a dream of mine to become an airline pilot. And I've always, since I was young, I was looking at videos, how to fly a plane, how to land a plane, especially emergency landings. It's just crazy how people survive it. But um, I sent it one day. I woke up, told my girlfriend, hey, you know what? I'm going to schedule an intro flight, and let's see how it goes without telling my parents. Use their credit card. And... Uh, <laughs> Basically, I went. I called this place called Ascent, a very good place to uh, train in. But um, I was like, "Hey, can I do an hour intro flight? Let's see if I like it, and let's see if I want to be a pilot." Went up for about an hour. They let me fly the plane. My first time. It was awesome. Like, as a pilot in command, you might like the passengers might feel the turbulence, but you, you're just flying and cruising. So I landed. Um, paid paid my hundred ninety nine dollars for that for that intro flight. And uh, I got a call from my mom. She goes, what did you just charge on my card for? I'm like, oh, it's an intro flight. And I go, I want to be a pilot. She goes, what? And she started freaking out. And so that's how <laughs> basically it all went. And after that, it's just two and a half months of every day flying. So it led me to some great success, to be honest with you. So, you know, the question I would have to ask is... Um Ted Williams was the last guy to hit 400 in the in major league in in uh, a regular season, and he was actually a pilot as well. So I guess that means you got to hit 400 this year. Absolutely, I'll do whatever <laughs> I can. <laughs> I'll do whatever I can to do that. So, um, junior this year, um, been on the team for two years. Um, both years that Coach Parenton's been here. Um, how did you come to UNF? What was your kind of recruiting process getting here and? Um, what have the last two years been for you? My recruit, well, obviously before uh, I wasn't under TP, uh, I was right. actually under Smoke Laval. But um, my group, I loved UNF from the first time I stepped on campus. It was great. Like 
everyone around me, like, I felt welcomed here. And uh, the last two years of baseball has been really, it's been an experience, especially going from one coach that recruited you to another coach that hasn't seen you play. And uh, TP is all about chances. He's, he'll give you chances, and you gotta, he's very fair about it. And if you don't, if you don't like, take, take advantage of it, you don't deserve to play, which is absolutely true. And um, it's been great. He's a really good coach. He's a player's coach. And uh, all the assistant coaches under him, from Tommy to Hannon to Brooksy, they're great. Like, they help TP out, take off some of his workload. And um, I think we have a really good team this year. A lot of new kids coming in, and uh, I think they'll we'll all contribute and get to the A-Sun and win the A-Sun. Uh, yeah, following you guys last year, you obviously had some exciting exciting wins, exciting games. You played, um, I believe, th- two SEC teams in Tennessee and Florida. Obviously took out Florida. Took, or three SEC teams. You played Mizzou, took two out of three from them. Um, just a really challenging and fun year. Um, obviously three guys in the MLB. Um, how how was being a part of that? It was awesome. Like especially the the tournament we went to, uh, up in Pensacola, the the teams that we just faced were such a great competition. Like we saw a kid from Tennessee throwing a hundred. It's just like you don't see something that like something like that every day. But uh, playing Florida, they're always top twenty five, top in the SEC. It was just uh, like even though they were a young team, we were a young team too with some veterans but uh it was it was great because you always see them b- being hyped up and obviously we're like we're UNF we're considered little to them but obviously we went into Gainesville beat them and uh we were a big talk for for like a couple weeks but it was great especially seeing your buddies getting drafted around June it's just crazy how they were college baseball players and now they're playing professional ball and seeing them succeed it's just great to see and they're catching up with them. They're like, oh, how do you like pro ball? And they, I love it. It's a great decision. So um, so now it's fall, and we have fall practices coming up this week, and everything's getting going, and obviously you got schoolwork, and you got this new found love in flying and pursuing that. How do, how do you balance all, this, all those things, and how do they all work together, and how does you know having the stress of being a pilot and flying and knowing those things influence those parts of your life? Wow, it's it's very stressful. Like how I how I look at my life now is I have to plan probably two to three weeks ahead because I try to plan. First of all, obviously school is my priority, then my family, then baseball, and then flying. So I basically look at my uh, school schedule. I take about two online classes, so I have online exams I have to schedule, and whatever I have free time for that, I make sure baseball is not in it because. Even though the coaches are very, very helpful and they support me with my, like being a pilot, I still don't want to interfere with baseball because obviously that's one of my main priorities. Then if I have free time, I go into my schedule and try to book as many flights as I can to ins- to like to train in because currently I'm currently training for uh, my instrument. So just flying, just using instruments, not looking outside, and so. It's very stressful. So what does that mean? Sorry to interrupt. Like you're not looking outside. You're yeah, so basi- in the plane and you're not. Yeah. So basically okay. instrument is just like if you're in really tough weather, like lightning, like rain, like in, you're in, you're flying in straight clouds and there's no visibility around you. You have to trust your instruments, like your instrument panel, like the speed you're going, your attitude of the plane, your altitude. You have to trust everything in the plane to like get it down. And to just fly a point A to point B as sa- like safely as possible. So sometimes, as an instrument pilot, you'll land without even seeing the runway, and all you gotta do is uh, focus on the lights on the runway, and that's how you land the plane. So that's how I'm currently training right now, and then after that will be my commercial, and then after my commercial, I'll be completely done. So you sent me that picture last week um, of you and pro- one of your instructors, I'm guessing. No, that was my uh, designated pilot. Exam. Okay, he's from the okay tran- Department of Transportation. I see. Yeah, explain to everybody what that was about and what you achieved and <sighs> what that was like and um, if you ever thought that would happen. Yeah, so roughly two weeks ago, my life basically somewhat changed <laughs> because <laughs> it, I became from a student pilot to only flying with an instructor to becoming a private pilot. 
Meaning, I can rent whatever plane I want at a single engine and just take it up in the air and fly. So, I met up with, obviously, a gov- government official from the Department of Transportation. So once I once I heard that, I a nerve just hit me because, like, I'm working with a guy, and that's basically gonna change my life or, like, he's gonna fail me. And so, I met with him. His name was Rich Tillery. He's very he's he's a very good guy, very fair. And uh, we had an oral presentation that started at 8 a.m. that uh, ended at 12, 12 p.m. So it was a four-hour oral presentation of everything in the plane, procedures. And then we scheduled another flight that we went up to uh, to Atlanta. And so we went up to Atlanta, did a cross-country there, and uh, it was probably about a two-hour flight. And basically, I had to fly the plane and him just examining me if I was safe competent pilot and uh and if obviously as a pilot you make mistakes but they don't fail you just because you make one mistake and so i achieved my license and basically like my life's changed like i can fly whatever i want and now i just even though it's called a private pilot it's what i call is a like a license to learn okay because you can you can do whatever you want with it so so this gives you access to g- to do what? So like, I just want to go out and fly now. Um, yeah. So I, I'm gonna get up, get in a plane, and I'm gonna fly to Gainesville if I want to. Yes. Yeah, so yesterday, actually. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, t- I rented a plane out. Uh, took my parents up. Really? Uh, I flew from Gainesville. Have they ever been I'm up? N- no, they've never been up with me, and my mom was scared, <laughs> man. Like I've never seen someone so scared. But my dad was super excited, and so I flew from Craig right by Atlantic and I uh, flew down to Ocala International and so it's probably a 30 minute 35 minute flight rather than a three hour drive but um I flew down to Ocala picked my parents up and uh, we went to Cedar Key and so we went to Cedar Key landed at the, one of the shortest airports in Florida it was awesome it gave me an ad- adrenaline rush my, my mom was screaming <laughs> and um we ate we ate lunch there and then uh we took back off and dropped them off at Ocala and then came back to Jacksonville. Was that risky? Was that risky for her to eat lunch before getting back on the plane? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but I, pr- I, I pretty much like landed the plane and like it was pretty smooth. So where she was like, all the nerves just got off, got out of her. But the first, the first takeoff was crazy because we we're going down the runway. First takeoff for her, and I was like, this is what it feels like to be in a cockpit. And uh, once we took off, it was like, she was like, she was fine. Mm -hmm. So I had a family friend that just kind of wanted to do the same thing. He was nearing a point in his life where I got to make some more money. And so he wanted to be a pilot. And they were doing nose dives and everything in the free fall. And he puked in his shirt the first time. So I wanted to ask if you've ever had like your stomach drop or what's your pre-flight ritual? Like, do you eat? Do you do you do something? Do you? listen to music is any different for you what is it like you wake up that day and you know you're flying to be honest with you when i when i wake up and i know i'm flying like even even though i've been flying and i have over 100 hours now it does it's nothing different it's always i'm always excited because if you think about it some people can't wake up and just say hey i'm gonna go fly an airplane Mm -hmm. i'm always i'm always excited i'm very humbled that i get to fly an airplane and train to become a pilot because some people, they just don't, like, they're not, pr- like, blessed enough or they have a lot of medical issues. Mm-hmm. And so I just wake up and just thank God every day and thank my parents, especially every time I land the plane, I thank my parents for supporting me. But uh, my pre-fight ritual is before I even leave the house, I always have to look at the weather. Yeah. Because if the weather's... I'm if guessing the, you care a lot more about the weather than yeah. you ever have in your life. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I can't, like, I know how to read radars now. <laughs> Rather than before, I would just listen to the radio. Like, yeah, oh, it's check the weather sunny. app on your iPhone. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I have to look at all the winds and stuff to, to see where my favorite routes are. But um, also, I have to look at the icing conditions up in the air. And uh, also, my one of my pre-fight rituals is, as a pilot in command, you don't really feel like the turbulence or anything like that because you know what the plane's doing you know what if you look at the weather you know what's gonna happen when you're flying so basically all i do is i check every little bolt every little thing on the plane every part of it 
and uh, if one something's not going on, I obviously tell the maintenance guy. And if I, uh, if he says it's uh, it's okay to fly, I'll fly. But if something's wrong, I hear a little hiccup on the engine. I'm not going. Do, do you ever get like? You ever like hear things with the plane? Like get Absolutely. paranoid? <laughs> Absolutely. Like when I'm in flight and uh, like I have the, I have the Bose headset and it's noise canceling, so like I can't hear anything. I can't hear the engine or anything. But is that myself, good or bad? It's good because okay. it's very loud. But, All that okay. Yeah. But you will hear a hiccup in the plane, like you will hear it. <laughs> okay. And so I've I've been I've been scared like probably three or four times when I've heard that I landed immediately and then they'd always say why'd you land so early because I heard something and um he goes you're fine you're fine that sometimes just does that because of the fuel or something like that I'm like all right but I'm just I'm always I'm always making sure because I see these incident reports I'm just like I don't want to be one of those guys you know what I'm yeah. saying and even though there's an adrenaline rush to every flight even though it just like feels like I'm swinging a baseball bat. Yeah. It's normal to me now. And, uh, I mean, it's all about safety. Yeah. That's what I care about. I don't care about flying. I just want to be safe and fly. And mm-hmm. have fun. Yeah. It's a, it's an interesting, uh, line to toe. You've yeah. got a, cause it uh, ultimately it's a, in some ways it's a thrill seeking thing. Absolutely. I mean, it's a passion and you're interested in it, but it's almost a thrill. Se- all right. Would you describe yourself as like kind of having a thrill seeking side or adventure side? Yes, I mm-hmm. would. I'll, I like it's a. It's still an adventure for me because yeah. it, wherever every time I go up, I'm always going somewhere new, or s- mm-hmm. practicing somewhere new, and it's like people always wonder why do planes at airports take so long to get out? You know what I'm saying? I like, get out of the gate. I just mm-hmm. want to go. I mean, if you look at it, we have a sheet of pa- we have probably like two sheets of paper that we have to look through, and uh, we have to make sure everything's right. If one thing's not right, we have to call maintenance, mm-hmm. especially in a big plane. Like, it's probably three pages long because I'm in a little plane. Imagine what a big plane feels like. Everything has to be, like, in the green, basically all the engine instruments. Everything has to be loose and free. So that's why that's why it takes forever to get out. Yeah. I mean, that goes with anything, I think. You know, yeah. a lot of people, they look at something that's pretty routine in the world that they rely on, and they're always like, this process takes to takes forever. Yeah. But it is a lot more complicated than anybody realizes until yeah. you're in it. Until you're flying the plane, yeah. like, oh crap! I yeah. do have to. I kind of, I kind of want to care about this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so right now, um, you've had some regional flights. You've Atlanta's been your furthest. Atlanta's been my furthest. Okay. It's probably Atlanta and Houston right now. Okay. Um, what What's your goal? What How far do you want these flights to go? Say, fifteen years, twenty years down the road. Uh, fifteen to twenty. Do you want to fly to the Philippines? You know, do that. <laughs> Absolutely, I would love to be. I'd love to be an international pilot. Mm-hmm. That's one of my goals. It's either for uh, Frontier, not Frontier, sorry. That's fr- that's domestic. Uh, Delta or Southwest, because mm-hmm. Delta has one of the uh, one of one of the best international in the uh, in U.S. right now. And so they they have routes from from here to China, stuff like that. And I've o- always wanted to fly to the Philippines, my hometown. Yeah. But um, as a general aviation type of guy after my instrument i'm planning to uh well that's my plan right now but i mean you can spill the beans yeah. as you go. <laughs> so it's, uh, i'm trying to plan a cross-country route to the uh, key west and then from key west i'm gonna go to straight across the water to texas and then texas to jacksonville but it's gonna be from here to key west is probably gonna be like two hours mm-hmm. but crossing the waters gulf that's yeah, yeah that's what i want to i want to mm-hmm. experience the crossing the waters What's the expectation with that? What do you have to fly differently over yes. the water? Yeah, you have to you mm-hmm. have to be at a pretty good altitude, probably mm-hmm. like ten thousand feet. Because there more are there is more cloud activity. No, it's basically just you get a tailwind, so okay. you basically get a general aviation uh, jet stream. Mm-hmm. So it's basically wind just pushing you to towards a direction, and uh, it saves you about like thirty minutes, and it just saves you a lot more fuel rather than that, like a headwind, like going against you basically like obviously slows you down if you uh, burn more fuel because you have to do more power to just get to the point a to point b but that's my plan it's gonna be a very fun trip i'm just gonna do it with my girlfriend once i get instrument rated mm-hmm. and uh that'll be really fun i also wanted to go to uh new york with it but 
Where that's, would you? That's a long flight. New York, in, in terms of New York City, or yeah, the yeah. city. It'd probably go like near, well, not like Long Island. Yeah, the regional airport because flying the JFK is gonna be tough. That's uh <laughs> probably the most air traffic. Um, yeah, you know. Uh, busyness yeah. in the nation. I mean, like, like, what do they say? New Jersey is the most UFO yeah. sightings of any, of any <laughs> state. You know, probably for that reason. You yeah. know, the people like you flying in and out of places. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, you, what does your girlfriend think about this? She loves it. Well, obviously, the first I took up the first time actually on Friday, mm-hmm. and uh, she she's very she was very scared. We went up to Gain. We actually went up to Gainesville. Well, went down to Gainesville and uh, ate with her family. Her family picked us up at Gainesville Regional. That's pretty cool. I'd just be like, yeah, we're going to go meet your parents. Let's fly there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very, it's, she she thought it was really cool. And she was obviously pleased that I took her up. Mm-hmm. And um, so we went down to Gainesville, ate with her family. And then uh, we're actually planning a trip to Orlando. So we're going to land at uh, Orlando Executive near MCO. And uh, we're going to go to Halloween Horror Nights. And so we're going to do Halloween Horror Nights nice. and then fly late at night back to Jack's on okay. next Sunday. So. All right. So this got to be fun for you because you can kind of plan out different yeah, things absolutely. on a whim and just kind of go. I have to do it anyways just to build my hours yeah. towards minimum requirements for mm-hmm. the airline. So might as well make a fun trip. Out and how many hours is that again? It's 1,500. Okay. So so how, do you, how long do you think that'll take you if uh, you do like an average time per week? What my goal is if... I'm going to do my hardest to obtain this goal and achieve it. But once I get instrument rated, probably before this uh, before this year ends, I'll have my private pilot and I'll be an instrument rated pilot. And then the whole entire spring while I'm playing baseball, I'll be training for my commercial. So that four months. It's going to be a busy, yeah. busy spring. So if I ask you for interviews, then I probably have to wait a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So in the spring, I'll probably be training for that, and uh, hopefully I'll get it done between the four months. And um, what I, what my plan is is to apply for a charter company, basically fly like fly jets. Once I get my commercials pilot, and um, what that what they'll do is if they hire me, they'll tr- put me into training for about a month just to learn how to fly those big jets. Because when you fly those jets, you don't fly. Mm-hmm. It's all computer. Mm-hmm. Unless, the in, obviously, the op- autopilot comes off, and you got to learn how to right. fly it. But uh, I want to do do that, and then that will build my hours big time. And that will probably get me to the, to minimum in, like, nine months. Okay. So. Um, how do you think this will – do you think it will change your mindset as a player? Absolutely. Yeah. The focus that you have – and like the the drive that you have to have to wake up and actually study, mm-hmm. it's just not flying. You gotta look into the books, mm-hmm. and like the aerodynamics and like everything that goes into the airplane. But for for being a player, yeah, it, like you have to focus on every little thing, mm-hmm. and that's what matters in baseball. Like focusing on every little thing, and uh, as being a pilot, like the big things you see, but the little things you can't see, and that's what sometimes kills you. Mm-hmm. So I think that will re- like affect me. Even Coach Hammond told me being a pilot was a good idea over summer because it'll re- like it'll make me a really good baseball player. That's interesting. Yeah, I didn't know if you've had any conversations with with them or with yeah. professors or yeah, because obviously there's a lot involved with it. There's a lot of time and safety and mm-hmm. um, just just the liability with it. But um, I mean, you, you got to imagine sitting in the box and kind of facing life or death every day in some senses Absolutely. and then going out there and okay this 90 mile an hour fastball hits me in the hip it's gonna hurt but it's no big deal yeah you know so or or i'm gonna go down swing you know whatever you're not thinking about that you're mm-hmm. thinking about purely executing and yeah. just being in the moment yeah, yeah. you got to be in the moment with everything yeah. because if you look out further in the time and just try to plan everything it's not it doesn't work like that everything's in the moment especially as being a pilot and a baseball player. You mm-hmm. can't think of what pitch is going to come when you're at a OO count. Mm-hmm. You can't think, oh, what's going to come later on in two pitches. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You got to think of what's what time is now. But uh, the coaches are very, very supportive. They actually saw me over the summer and uh, asked me what my plans were, and I told them. And they're like, oh, that's really awesome. Just keep doing it. We'll be here to support you. And uh, – uh, we had a team meeting last Thursday or whenever it was, mm-hmm. and uh, TP let me miss it because that was when my check ride was scheduled. Mm-hmm. And luckily, and <laughs> thank God, <laughs> I passed my check ride. So 
they're very supportive about it. Obviously, baseball hasn't come first because that's why I'm here. Mm-hmm. And uh, they said if I have time to just let them know, like two weeks in advance, mm-hmm. and they'll they'll be able to support me with it. How is it? You think with class gonna you know be obviously there's you only get you only have so much mental energy, you know obviously you have to study for your flying and then mm-hmm. you know class. Did you ever think that you'd get to a point where? man, I'm going to be taxed so much on that side of things. Yes. Yeah. It's, I'm nervous about that right now. Yeah. But uh, I'm taking five classes right now. It's supposed to be one of my hardest semesters because uh, I'm supposed to be graduating next fall. So everything's okay. like... So you're uh, a semester early. Yeah, everything. And is what's your major again? Finance. Okay. So everything's supposed to be like re- like tough. And I'm getting that, r- I'm getting that right now because mm-hmm. I have like three exams coming up, a lot of homework to do in my accounting classes. And um, to be honest with you, I just put every I put my pilot things aside until I'm done with these three exams, mm-hmm. and then once I'm done, I'm gonna go back straight into pilot studying. But yeah, everything's gonna be stressful. But I know if I just push through it, everything's gonna work out my way. Mm-hmm. So, um, I remember last year I was talking to Chris before he left, and he said he wanted to get into flying. <laughs> he actually said that to me. Yeah. So I was asking him what his thoughts were post graduation because you know. Chris is a good uh, good guy to talk to. Uh, <laughs> has he talked to you at all? Absolutely, very. Uh, every time I post something on my story, <laughs> is he super jealous or supportive? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, "Oh my gosh, Raph! Like, tell me, uh, tell me how you do this. Tell me how you do that. How did you get into this?" Like, there's a lot of people that ask me about it, but the person that really stands out is Chris Berry because he's always told me in the season, "I've always wanted to be pilot. It's like my dream." Like. This mm-hmm. is what I want to be. I remember he said that, and I was I was like, wow, that's okay. That's yeah. not what I expected to hear. Yeah, and then so every time I would post something, it would, the first, I would see a lot of names just mm-hmm. asking me how everything is, and then I'd see Chris Berry. I don't know why, but it would just be <laughs> Chris Berry that would pop up into my head, and I would answer him first out of everyone because he's just very interested about it. Mm-hmm. And so I would tell him, like, Barry, like, it's very, it's very time-consuming. Like I know, I know you're very interested into it, but what you have to do is you have to go to use mm-hmm. that intro flight. You got to know that that's what you want. And then the f- main things he asked me is, "Raph, do you feel the turbulence?" <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yes, Barry, you you will feel it, but you can't be a pilot if you're scared of it. <laughs> and he goes, "Yeah, I know, but I'm, I'm always wanted to be into it." And I told him to look up some videos on YouTube, the uh, ones, that, especially my favorite YouTubers, mm-hmm. that are pilots. Um, he loves it. He keeps texting me from this day on. He goes, Raph, can you take me up? I want to I, I wanna be a pilot. Like, mm-hmm. I want to f- see how it feels like. And so I'm like, yeah, Barry, I'll, I'll do whatever I can to help you. I'll take you up, you know. And I'm planning to take him up this probably in like the next two weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah, just so he can just so he can feel. That'd be an interesting little last for yeah. future there. You got two uh, baseball players. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> and uh, just seeing Barry as a pilot, like he's very chill, yeah. you know. And it's just, it was just really funny how he approached me, but I love it. I like when people like approach me and they're just like, hey, I want to get into flying. I'm like, mm-hmm. do it, man. You're not going to regret it. It's got to be a pretty big honor because a lot of people see you as, um, you know, a stepping stone into that if they want it or just somebody pursuing something unique that they care about. Yeah. Um, what's the community like amongst like, your types of pilots, your age, and everything on the internet, like, is there a community that they share thoughts and discussions and ideas, and do people, like, have YouTube channels and Instagram pages kind of devoted to this thing where they speak about it and share? Yeah, absolutely. I actually have my Instagram. Yeah, I know you do. Yeah. yeah by myself, my main account and a pilot account. Right. Because that's all it is. It's basically, the community is just, a lot of, like, pilots are mm-hmm. always learning. And uh, it's basically just, like, the YouTube videos. And uh, there's this thing called AOPA. It's a pilot's organization. It's, like, a group, a big group. And people just share their thoughts. And uh, there's always um, air adventure stuff, like like shows in, out in Daytona and Oshkosh. And uh, it's basically once once you go there, like, they everyone knows each other, even though it's over 10. The one in... Oh, uh, Wisconsin? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Even though it's like over 10,000 people, mm-hmm. they'll take pictures of each other. It's like every <clears throat> everyone's very supportive. Everyone's just wanting to learn. Everyone has a goal to either become a corporate pilot, airline pilot, or whatever the pilot they want to be for nonprofit, for their own use, for business. 
but everyone's on the same page. Everyone wants mm-hmm. to be safe. They don't want to be one of those incident reports. Mm-hmm. Not everybody's going for the Blue Angel life. Yeah, yeah. just doing barrel rolls and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> That's that takes some cra- yeah. like some skill. I think. Yeah, some no- knowing all the aerodynamics. But anyways, everyone's everyone's on the same page. Like, like for me, I'm I basically my goal is to become either corporate or airline, mm-hmm. and so I don't know how it does it, but social media nowadays just puts every like, everything that you want that you're interested in your phone, and yeah. somehow. And somehow, like, all the people I've connected with through LinkedIn, through all their group messages, through a- AOPA, everyone has the same goal as me. So it's it's really it's really cool how we can, like, share thoughts and, hey, how do how can we get through these 15 hour, 1,500 mm-hmm. hour minimums? Mm-hmm. So that's, it's really cool and supportive through all that. So How do you see, I mean, w- with studying finance, do you see that factoring in at all in the future? If, if there's, I don't know if there's any entrepreneurial effort you can have with flying or you know, any administrative side that, that you have to be part of that would help you with or wh- I, what's I, your view? I love finance mm-hmm. and it's always something I've wanted to be with within that field. But, uh, being a corporate pilot, it's basically like working, working in the business area, but being their pilot also. So for example, if I wor- works for Walmart's like head headquarters department, the finance, in, uh, finance department, and I was considered a corporate pilot. I'd also be con- like be one of their financial analysts in the headquarters, and whenever we need to go to like a meeting, and for example, California, and we were based out of, I think they're based out of South Carolina, we'd go from South Carolina to California, and I'd be become the pilot in command. So I'd also be getting paid for being a pilot and being a financial analyst. So that'd be really cool, you know, knocking two birds in one stone type of thing, but uh. If that doesn't work, that's one, that's one of my main priorities because it has such a lower uh, hour hour minimum requirements, like I think eight fifty. Mm-hmm. But if the airlines, I see a path in the airlines, I'm gonna go take it. Awesome. So, all right. Well, thanks so much, Raf, for being on. It's awesome to talk to you more about this. Um, I'm gonna keep tabs on things. Uh, let Thank me know you. how it goes and. Uh, yeah, p- uh, definitely send me some uh, audio clips if you can. I will. I want to uh, splice that in if possible. So uh, this is Raph Libanow, junior on the uh, Ospreys baseball team. Uh, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Thanks again for being on the show today, Raph. Uh, before we close up, make sure to follow everything that is going on within our athletic department as our fall seasons heat up. and We have a particularly busy weekend at home. Uh, This weekend, we'll have the men's and women's soccer teams at home with the women hosting Air Force in their home opener Sunday and the men welcoming Georgia Southern Friday night. Volleyball will be hosting five total matches, but three uh, in which they're involved. They'll be playing Belmont, LIU, and FIU. Going on the road is women's golf at the USA Intercollegiate Men's Tennis opening its fall season at UNC Wilmington. The women... They will be in South Carolina and Columbia. And men's and women's cross country will be down in Gainesville at the Mountain Dew Invitational. So thanks again for tuning in to the first installment of Talent Talk. I'm Brock Borgeson. We will be back here next week with another inside look at our athletic department featuring interview guest Emily Strack.